On February 14th, 2019, Valentine's Day, Jesse Smollett sat down for an interview with the most credulous person and also the best paid person on television, Robert Roberts, to describe his fake hate crime. Here's what he said. As I was crossing the intersection, I heard Empire. And I don't answer to Empire. <laughs> My name ain't Empire. Uh, and I didn't answer. I kept walking and then I heard Empire. So I turned around and I said, the did you just say to me? I mean, I see the uh, attacker uh, masked and he said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. I was just jumped. And I, then I looked down and I see that there's a rope around my neck. If there's a rope around my neck in downtown Chicago at two in the morning on the way back from the subway, cause I don't like Donald Trump. It happens a lot in Chicago. So as he was giving that interview and Robin Roberts was nodding, oh, Jesse, yes. The people who beat him up were in custody in Chicago. They're called the Osendario brothers. They're from Nigeria and they were giving police the evidence that ultimately led to the convictions we just saw. Now, Smollett's lawyer is promising that conviction will be overturned. We thought it'd be interesting to hear from the attorney for the Osendario brothers. Her name is Gloria Rodriguez, and we're very glad to join, have her join us tonight. Gloria, thanks so much for coming on. So what do your clients think of all of this? Oh my goodness, Tucker. Well, let me just say first and foremost that when you first had me on, it was pretty early on after this yeah. uh, you know, hoax came on, and I came back on your show first because you promised me um, that you would follow this story correctly and portray it correctly. And true to your word, you did. And you've Thank gotten you. it right since day one on this. So I'm, I'm happy to be back and um, here talking to you about what happened. And you and I both knew what really happened. And uh, the Osunaro brothers are very thrilled and, and, and grateful that the jury, you know, didn't buy the fake act. Well, yeah, I mean, it must have been bewildering for them since they were there and they knew exactly what happened to hear Jesse Smollett describe this fantasy with a straight face. I mean, what kind of person could do that? You know, it's, it's your right to take the stand if you're the defendant. Um, it carries obvious risks with it, but it's yes. not your right to lie to the jury. It's, you don't have the right yeah. to make up your own set of facts. And um, one of the uh, OSP, the Office of the Special Prosecutors, my favorite part of this trial was watching Sam Mendenhall. What an amazing attorney from that team. He kept saying in his closing remarks, you're entitled to your own opinions. You're not entitled to your own facts. And that's what Mr. Smollett kept trying to do is just change the facts. And as much as he tried to sell that story, it just didn't make any sense. And you have to consider... The Osundario brothers testified for two days. They were not, you know, they didn't have any way of knowing the testimony of the other. And they went into significant details about what went on. And all of this was corroborated by the police. Oh, yeah. But I wonder, though, I mean, there's so much lying just in our society, if I can just say. And you begin to think, well, maybe people believe it. You don't know whether they believe it. And here you have a jury. I don't know who was on it, but just like normal Americans... And I did wonder, like, will they believe this stuff? Were you worried at all about the outcome? No, I wasn't worried about the huh. outcome. I mean, <laughs> sorry to say that so bluntly. Oh, I love it. I mean, it. you know, th there are juries that are unpredictable at times, but this is one of those cases, Tucker, um, and I know you covered this on your show, so I won't belabor it, but there was a mountain of evidence uh, to show that every detail that the Osundario brothers were saying was corroborated. They said, yeah. for instance, that they did a dry run on that, you know, Saturday before the event, and the police were able to track down Jesse's car. And so what plausible, you know, viable theory could Jesse give for all those exact things? It just, nothing he said was cohesive or made sense. Right, I know, but for those of us who so desperately want to believe in our justice system, above all systems in this country, this was a thrilling result because it was reality-based, and I love that you never doubted it. Thank you for coming on tonight. It's great to see you again. Thank you, Tucker. Great to be on, and Feliz Navidad. Amen. Feliz Navidad.